One song, two producers, it's time to do this again. Episode number three. My very first producer battle was my pro in GarageBand versus beginner in Logic Pro, which was a huge success. Nathan, what have you done? Second, I took on Forrest Whitehead, Grammy nominated producer and five time number one hit songwriter. That one was super dope. Dude. This time, one of my producer accelerator students challenged me to a duel and I said, bring it on. I mean, I'm just gonna guess he's gonna try to use what I taught him to, you know, beat me at my own game. So no, it's whatever. No, no, but seriously, Phil, Phil's, Phil's a great dude. He's a cool dude. We each got sent the vocal, which you'll hear in just a second, and there is only one rule. We have to use that vocal. That's it. We have nothing but the vocal to work with, and we have to produce the entire track from scratch. We can do absolutely anything we want, so heck, for all I care, Philip could make a mumble rap song if he wanted to. Which I, I don't even know how that would be physically possible, but... Uh, you know. I do want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to the artist whose vocal we're going to be using in this track. That is Elias. I have all of her socials in the description down below if you dig her voice. And then you get to vote in the comment section down below who's your favorite was. With that, I think it's time for Phil and I to listen to the vocal we'll be working with. It's time to take a listen to this song. Let's just take a listen. Let's just see what we're working with. All right, so we have the song open up, just the vocals. Let's take a listen. What's the worst that could happen? Don't you want to do right? You're more than a player. Take control, make a life. Nice. Brush it off now. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Brush it off now. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Hey, ho! Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Don't overthink, just go for it. Hey, ho! Like yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Don't overthink, just go for it. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Hey, ho! Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't overthink, just go for it. Okay. This is gonna be fun. I almost wanna see if I can do something like completely different than what you might expect out of this. I don't know. We'll see what we come up with. Let's do it. I dig it already. I usually have a more cinematics ballad type of feel. So this is gonna be a challenge for me, but I'm excited. Nathan's gonna get me on the groove. He's really good at the MIDI drums, but uh, let's go. So the very first thing I did when I listened to the vocal was just pick out the chords. Down, only two chords, the entire song worked. A minor and D minor. I wanted to make it a little more interesting, so what I ended up coming up with was this, just for the, the main intro to hearing her voice with some kind of instrument. Nice and simple. And then so what I did on the kind of the pre-course now, I just changed the middle chord and I just changed the rhythm just to let you know that something was going to be kind of hyping up. And then I just added in an extra piano. So that piano on top there. And all I did is I just layered it up just to kind of make that a little more present. The other thing that, that you'll notice, and I wanted very apparent at the beginning, is just this weird kind of bass line. And so when you hear this come, it comes in right at the beginning, and it is meant just to let you know, it, to throw you off guard, honestly. That's just an alchemy bass, and I threw on some thermal here from output. So you throw that with that piano and just... A little ear candy here. Now all I wanted to do on that pre-course besides I, I changed up the piano a little bit just to let you know that it was kind of hyping up there. Very, very basic rhythm. Uh, I wasn't going for this big elaborate type of uh, drum production. I mean when you hear like the, the kick will come in and it's just a nice basic I end up blaring it and then a very basic snare when it comes in. You go into the chorus and Don't you wanna do right? Now this line right here for this production again a lot of times I took the lyrics quite literally in the way I was producing. 
So here she says, they control my life. So saying take control. And I just added a little bit of uh, alter boy, a little bit of distortion here to show that the, it almost sounds like they're losing a little bit of control. Take control, my life. So piano is king. I love piano. I will put piano in any song I possibly can. So when we get into the course here, it could just be the kit, the rhythm section, the bass and the piano. And to me, it's like already sending a message. But then I added in a damage kick and a more driving force on this on the second verse. So you have and this ear candy was just kind of a distorted lead. It's just, again, a little bit of movement just to let you know that something's changing a little bit. And in the course, it's kind of a, a driving force, just a little bit of a movement back in there. Almost that good evil type of vibe is what I was feeling on this song. On the course, like I have a choir starting to come in. It's almost like like you're being judged for the decision you make. Besides that, everything else is the same from course from course one. Now the original song, that's where it ended. For me, I wasn't done yet. So I took some of the lyrics and I created its own bridge. What's the worst that could happen? Don't you wanna do right? Now again, the voice is a little distorted because like this person is losing control. Don't you wanna do right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Aren't you so I've kind of built that as a final buildup. Now you gotta if you're gonna do a third course, you gotta make it big. So here's where I used all the doubles. I created some harmony, but it was here that I just brought everything back, of course, I added in a little extra crash, and I added in some extra, um, I call it on here horn attack, but just some more driving force, some low strings. I mean, I brought the full shebang here. The very first thing that I started with was the bass. And the next thing that I wanted to do was start working on percussion. So I pretty much got the percussion built right away. I found a loop in Outputs Arcade that sounds like this. The bass. So pretty much using just a, a typical minor chord progression. But then what I wanted to do was make it so as we got into the pre-chorus, it was more chromatic. And so I wanted the bass line to do this chromatic line that goes kind of like that. So you get this more chromatic, interesting. I did not want to use like a typical like three chord chord pattern. I wanted the chord progressions to be changing throughout the whole track. So verse one is really simple. I pretty much have this bass going on and then I have this percussion going on right here. I'll just play this all out for you with the bass. And then what I did is I started adding in two different elements of ear candy on verse one. The very first was this vocal uh, kind of sample that I found within battery. And then I just, as you can see here, I processed the living crap out of it. it sounds like this. And as you can hear, I actually automated the panning on this. So you kind of get the panning sweeping around you. The other little piece of air candy that I, ear candy that I added was this uh, particle string sound that I found in arcade. One of the other cool things I did in here was I wanted to add some effects. And so I added this cool little moment in here where everything kind of hits and it's like this, whoa, like now I have your attention. And then once we got into the pre-chorus is where I started adding a little bit more percussion. I added the kick in, I added a little bit of snare just to kind of give a little bit of motion. And then the last thing I did on this verse is I added these strings in here. And as you can hear, the strings are being pulsed. So I'm using really colorful chords. And so that brings us pretty much into the chorus where the chorus is actually very, very simple. You can see here, all that I have going on in the chorus is some percussion and bass and then the vocal for this very first chorus. We'll talk about the second chorus here in a second. But what I did is I had uh, this slapped bass. 
so <laughs> it really grooves and obviously sounds totally different from everything we've heard so far. And so with that, I ended up actually throwing in kind of a full blown kind of percussion deal. <laughs> It's got some groove to it. And that right there is pretty much the first chorus. So second verse, as I mentioned, I changed the chord progression. And then the other thing I did is I added in some other just very kind of simple elements to just highlight some of the changes made. The first one was this uh, piano that has some delay on it. So you can really hear that chord. And then going into the second uh, part of this verse or the pre-chorus is really where I wanted to kind of take things to the next level because so far to this point, we don't have any like straight up just like beat going on. And so what I did here was I added a straight up beat. Boom. The other thing I did here is I used a lot of side chain and what this is doing is just pushing everything down so when that kick hits, it's just you get this like throbbing kind of a vibe to it. The last thing that I did in this is I did actually use a vocoder. Push it off now. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. And that brings us to the very last chorus, which I think is the most fun part of the whole song. First thing I did is I added more percussion. I added a much bigger snare sound on there because I wanna, again, make this to feel dynamically more interesting. Here, added some crash cymbals, added more snares. And you throw that in with that bass guitar. And that brings us to kind of the big thing that I was the most happy and excited about. And that was these three elements right here. I have two keyboard elements and then some horns. Why not add some horns? Here's what this sounds like. <laughs> yes. Get that rip in there, why not? This video does not have a sponsor, which means if you're a home studio producer looking to level up your producing game like Phil was, then you need to join my course, Producer Accelerator. I cover every aspect of home studio production from beginning to end, enough said, link in the description. All right, moment of truth is here. It's time to check out what Phil did. I'm excited, I hope you are too. Let's see what we got. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, here we are, You're more than a player. Take control, make a life. Yeah. Push it off now. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Totally different yeah. rhythmic pulse. Push it off now. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Hey, ho! You put that on the one. Yeah. That's crazy. Aren't you glad that you did it? I love that harmony. Ah! It's a match made in heaven. Dominant seventh chords. It's simple, it's easy. Just let go completely. Brush it off now. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Dude, 
Okay. You should be really proud of that, first of all. Like, so straight up creative points, like, through the roof. The fact that he heard that, hey, ho, as on beat one, instead of one, hey, ho, on the off beat. That was crazy. I love that. The way you harmonized this, too, was really cool. I really like the way you harmonized her vocal, especially on the verses. I think that's where we both had fun with it, was in the harmonization. I like the instrument. I mean, he made it, he made it longer, obviously. Like for me, I didn't, I didn't do that. So he went the extra mile <laughs> on that. And to be completely honest, if I were to have heard this without knowing anything about Philip, I would not be thinking, oh, this is an amateur producer. I think the piano was maybe the only thing that I, I wish would have sounded a little more realistic. And I think reverb would have probably helped us to push it back in space a little bit more. That was the only thing that didn't feel really well done throughout this whole thing. Again, sound choices were fantastic. The way that you use the the snare type sounds, like whatever it is that you were using for those particular sounds, I think worked really, really well. So dude, Philip, way to go. Honestly, dude, you should feel super great about this. People, drop a comment down below, let him know how awesome he did. With that said, I think it's time for Philip to listen to my track. Crazy excited, but also crazy nervous. Let's just take a listen. What's the worst that could happen? Okay. Don't you wanna do right? No, I'm just kidding. So, man, man, I absolutely love like the horn use and man, there's just so much to talk about. But here's probably my favorite part of this song, that background. Dun. It's a match made in Dun. heaven. Man, those horns that come in, I gotta change my mind. My favorite part of the song, he's got you vibing on this, on this new part and then he just completely changes up the beat kind of like I did. Just like smacks you across the face with something new, but then brings in all these strings and right here just changes it up on you. Oh, man, I love the stutter. Man, Nathan, man, that was just absolutely dope. You know, I hear something like this and like I have no idea how, like your mind, how you came up with that, but everything, just loved it, dude. Awesome, awesome job. Make sure you give Phil some love in the comments section down below. And I gotta say, I was absolutely impressed by what he created. So seriously, Phil, well done. Make sure you vote who your favorite track was. Comment, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. We'll see you in the next one.